In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, wishing you all a very happy new year. Every year, the church's liturgical year begins with the first Sunday of Advent. Today, we begin year A, a new reading cycle known as Year of St. Matthew. As we begin this new year, let us give thanks to God. We give thanks to God for all his blessings, for nourishing us with his word and sacrament throughout last year. And we also pray that he may continue to pour out his blessings on us during this holy season of Advent and beyond. What is Advent? I mean, for many of us, we've been through a few Advents, haven't we? We are familiar with, with Advent. Advent is a time of preparation for the second coming of our Lord. I guess one of the ways to understand Advent is by reflecting on the two dimensions of our salvation. Already and not yet. Already, as the word implies, that has already taken place. And not yet is obviously something it hasn't happened as yet. During Lent, the, the, uh, sorry, during Advent, the readings take us to the time before the first coming of Christ. We call this era BC, before Christ. The liturgy invites us to relive that first period of expectation when the whole world awaited the Saviour. The prophets longed for a Messiah. They longed for a Redeemer. They longed for a Deliverer. And as always, God fulfilled his promise. So we call this dimension of our salvation as already. That's something that has come true. Something has already happened. Now we are waiting for the second part, not yet. Our Jewish brethren are still waiting for the Messiah. They're still waiting for, the, for his first coming. While we Christians, we look forward to his second coming. But there's a huge difference between the first and the second coming. Unlike the first coming. The whole world will see and experience a second coming in glory. The gospel we heard today, Jesus tells us to stay awake and be ready. For he is coming at an hour we do not expect. Natural question and tendency to ask is how long do we have to wait for? It's been 2,000 years, but is it going to be another 2,000 years? Is it going to be another 100 years? Is it going to be a year? We do not know. The only thing I guess we need to concern ourselves is how can we prepare ourselves? How can we be ready? How can we prepare for a second coming? How to stay awake and be ready? I'm guessing preparation is easy when we, if we know the date, or the time as to when it's going to happen, like working towards a deadline. As human beings, it's quite easy for us, isn't it? From a little age, we used to be trained. We trained for, for exams, for example, in school. Each year there's quarterly, half yearly, annual exams, whatever. We know the date and the time, and it's easy when it's going to happen. Because we know once that exam is over, we can forget about it. And move on with life, yes? Obviously, none of us sitting here and listening to this, thinking about the exams we did in our high school or in college or at job interviews. We've forgotten about it. We have moved on, haven't we? Yeah? But preparing for the second coming of our Lord is different because we do not know the date or the time. This means we must be ready always which is 24-7, trust me, it is a tall order for us frail human beings. It is not easy. 
because it involves a lifetime of preparation. It involves perseverance, dedication, focus, and total surrender to the will of God. Saints tell us when we read their biography, when we read their stories, they tell us the best way to prepare, or they say the best way to live life is to prepare to die every day. How often do we think about dying? Do we think about dying every single day? Or is it the last thing we want to think about? Yes. There are so many ways we can prepare ourselves for a second coming, especially during this holy season of Advent. Let me just share with you some of the ways I'd like to suggest, if I may, for what it's worth. The first one, obviously you guessed it, prayer, prayer. If you're already praying and you already have a great prayer life, I mean, that's excellent. For those who haven't, it's quite easy to say, well, you know, it's Advent, I'll pray more. We just say, well, I'll pray more. That probably won't happen. Yeah. Or if you say, oh, well, you know, I'll pray every day. That won't happen either. I suggest to set aside maybe a time. I, whatever time suits you, maybe first thing in the morning or at midday, you want to break the day or during a lunch break, for example, or at night before going to bed. Whatever it is to set aside a time. And you know what they say? You do something for 30 days. It becomes a habit. Second one is Angelus, especially during the season of Advent. I strongly recommend that you pray the Angelus. If you're already praying the Angelus, that's fine. If you don't know how to pray the Angelus, I would invite you to visit our channel, the Laughing Christ channel. There are so many prayers and one of them is the Angelus. Yes, and you can pray along with me. And the, the church prays the Angelus three times a day, 6 a.m. in the morning, at midday, and at 6 p.m. Probably might be difficult for you to join with all three timings, but maybe one of the one of the three, whichever is convenient and suits your circumstances. The third, to make a good confession. To make a good confession always, but especially during this season, so that we are ready, we are preparing ourselves for his coming. The fourth one, which probably is tricky and is quite hard, because for, to do this, we need to look at ourselves in the mirror, and we need to be honest with ourselves, and ask, what are the biggest distractions in my life right now? What are the things that are taking up so much of my time right now? It may be different. Surely it is different for different people. For some, it could be their phones. They cannot let go of their phones. They are all constantly on their phones. For some people, it could be the social media. For some, it's a TV, the TV series. I watched one season, I would watch another season, season after seasons self-indulgence or gossiping or leading simply an idle lifestyle and the list is endless isn't it we are surrounded with so many distractions and it's question for us to decide as to what they are and to let go of them because this way we're making not external changes but these changes are internal internal changes in our lives not just for a day, not for a month, not just for the season, but every single day to make these changes. St. John Henry Newman once said, to live is to change and to be perfect is to have changed often. Watch out for those people who say, well, I'm still the same. I haven't changed a bit in five years or 10 years. Watch out for those people. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, wishing you all a very holy and grace-filled season of Advent. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.